Hey, what's up, VC? I'm back with another video. This is actually a video response, a very late video response to Rob over at Black Star Vinyl. If you're not subbed to him, there'll be a link down below as usual. Definitely go check him out. He's a huge docking fan like myself, uh, so it's really cool, and he just posts really awesome stuff. I mean, he finds all sorts of 80s second tier hair metal and 90s stuff and just knows all sorts of stuff so definitely go check him out this is his not so 400 subscribers contest he did it back when he had like 350 ish and uh, now he does have 400 so that's super awesome uh the contest ends in like two days so i just wanted to get a last minute entry and i've been super busy haven't had time to make one uh but definitely wanted to get one in i uh, got my cheat sheet here there's a bunch of questions but we're going to try to fly through these um I'm going to do them in a different order, save the best for last. Uh, but anyway, uh, one of the questions he had asked uh, was if we could be any superhero, who would we be? Mine would probably be Captain America because I love history, love World War II. So that's just kind of why, I, you know, I'm not a huge superhero person. So that's just the first one that came to my mind. So I'm going with him. Hope that works. Um, second thing I'm going to do is the shout outs. He wanted us to give four shout outs to four VC channels either under 200 subs or close to a milestone. Um, the first one, a uh, guy that everybody who's subbed to me should know, but if you don't, go check him out. There'll be a link down below to his channel, is Greg the Egg over there at Blackmore Rules channel. Uh, just a super funny dude, um, and he posts really awesome stuff. So definitely go check him out. Um, he's over 200, but he's almost at 300, so let's get him to 300 because he's had a channel forever. Another one is Frankie's Music. Uh, he's a guy in Canada that posts um, a lot of cool stuff. And he's another one that's right over 200. Uh, so, you know, I figured I'd stick him in there. Because um, he's got a great channel. Shows a lot of, you know, 80s hard rock, metal, hair metal, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and a lot of Malmsteen, too. So, um, Rob, if you're not sub to him, definitely go check him out. Um, another guy is Gary's Vinyl Dungeon. I just found out about his channel uh, recently, and, um, he just shows all sorts of cool stuff, so definitely go check him out, he is under 200, and another guy under 200 that's been around for a while, um, is Headbanging Zulu UK, uh, definitely go check him out, as I said, link will be down below, um, okay, and then let's get into another question, uh, his questions were really interesting, you, you know, not your common show your five favorite albums by this artist, or, you know, five favorite musicians or live albums or whatever. Um, he wanted us to give four grails. Uh, so this one's really cool. I have a pretty long want list um, and I've been knocking off a couple grails recently. One of my top grails was an original pressing of Jefferson Airplane Surrealistic Pillow. It's one of my favorite albums ever. They're one of my favorite bands ever. Um, I recently picked up a stereo, an original stereo pressing, first pressing. I really want a mono copy, but the stereo will work for now. So that'll be one of them, but that was kind of a runner up because I do have a copy already. If anybody knows or anybody has a mono first pressing of Surrealistic Pillow, definitely let me know. Definitely interested. Uh, but anyway, um, one that's kind of off the wall that you wouldn't expect from me. Um, it's actually an album by Tiny Tim. In the 90s, he put out a country album called Leave Me Satisfied. It's actually really good. It's not, you know, the tiptoe through the tulips type stuff. He actually has a really decent voice. He even did some rock stuff in the 90s that was pretty cool. Uh, did a Bon Jovi cover, you know, Highway to Hell, Rebel Yell by Billy Idol and stuff like that. So I really want a copy of that. The only copy that I've seen that is sold on eBay in the last couple of years uh, was posted a couple months ago and sold for like 100 bucks, and I just couldn't afford it at the time. But I definitely want a copy of that. Uh, another one that's really hard to find is Razor Made First Cut. It's a underrated metal band from the late 80s, I believe it may be, early 90s. I'm sure Rob knows who they are. It's just a great album. I actually found it on an AOR a metal site, and you know they had a download of it, and I downloaded it. I was like, wow, this stuff just blew me away. And that album's about 150 bucks. You can get it on Discogs, but that's a little more than what I want to pay for an album, but it is on the top of my want list. Hopefully I can find it one day for way cheaper than that. Um, another one, Rob, still super jealous. Um, it's Richie Sambora's Stranger in This Town. I want a vinyl copy of it. Uh, there's a couple different pressings. You know, there's a Korean pressing and Brazilian and stuff like that, but I want a UK pressing because I've heard those are the best. I think there's a UK with 
the one that he got with nothing on the cover and there's another one with blue lettering that says Richie Sambora. I don't care which copy I get. I just really want to copy that because that's one of my favorite albums ever. Definitely top 20 albums of all time. Um, and then another one that's not super uncommon, uh, but I just want to find a copy of it is Watchtower's Energetic Disassembly. Uh, not a huge fan of the music. It's just, you know, they're an Austin band. They were pre-dangerous toys. Billy White, the guitar player, went on to play on Dodd and Dawkins' a solo album he did in the 90s, Up From the Ashes, which is a fantastic album with a lot of cool musicians, well-known musicians, and I just really want a copy of that. Um, what else? Uh, another question was, our four best live shows? I've been to a lot of concerts in the last couple of years. My first, well, I went to concerts before, but my first rock concert was Michael Schenker at a little tiny club. Um, it was a great show. Wouldn't make this list because I've got some other ones that were just mind-blowing or, you know, super fanboy moments. But Michael Schenker as a first rock concert was pretty dope. Uh, but anyway, we're going to get right into it. Uh, I got some stuff right here uh, just to show. Um, so they're in no particular order. I'm just going to start with him first. But Don Dokken, as you know, Dokken is my favorite man. Don Dokken is my favorite singer. Has been for a long time. Will probably be for a long time probably forever. I just love his voice and everything he's ever done. And two years ago, uh, he came to Brookshire, which is about 15 miles from me, which was insane, to a little festival they were holding over there called Parfest. And he did an acoustic show to about 20 people. There were probably about 100 people there for the other bands, but by the time he came on, everybody had left and there were about 20 people there. But it was just a really good show, and it was my first time seeing him, and I got to meet him afterwards, and it was just super dope. You know, I was front row. This was a picture I actually took. Not sure if it'll show up on camera, because it is nighttime and lighting's crappy. But took that picture so you could see how close I was, and it was just unreal. I mean, his voice is still phenomenal. You know, he the regular docking stuff doesn't sound like the old stuff. You know, he can't sing like he used to, but the acoustic stuff really fits his voice really well. And I got to meet him afterwards, which was insane. You know, one, like I said, a, just a super fanboy moment. And I just, so yeah, that's why that was one of my top four best shows I've been to. Um, another one is when I saw Jeff Tate do Operation Mindcrime last summer in its entirety. That is my favorite album of all time. Just, you know, I know that's a typical thing to say, oh, that's one of your favorite out, one of the best albums of all time. But it, it really is. I just, ever since I heard that album as a kid, I've been mind blown. And to see him do that album live was insane. So that definitely made that list. Um, here's another one that was kind of a this off-the-wall show. Uh, the only reason I know who he is is because of Greg over at Blackmore Rules. Um, and it is John Michael Thor, Thor, whatever you want to call him. Uh, he came to Houston and played a free show, actually, uh, last year. I think it was in August. I may be wrong on that. Um, but... I went, you know, not expecting a bunch because I didn't know a lot of his music, but same thing with as Don Dog. There were about 25, 30 people there, and it was just a really killer show. His band was great. He was cool. Got to meet him afterwards, got the set list, got him to sign it, and it was just super cool. So that was definitely one of the better shows. And then another one, just a mind-blowing show, is when I saw Graham Bonnet two years ago. I uh, got a set list from there, got his whole band to sign it. You know, I got to meet him. He was super cool. Uh, the guitar player, Joey Tafoya, which was, uh, he was one of those shredder guys in the 80s. He's been in all sorts of bands, Jag Panzer, stuff like that. Uh, he was killer, could play the Malmsteen stuff, the Shanker stuff, you know, the Graham Bonnet band stuff. And it was just super cool show. So those, that's those. And then last but not least, the last question. This was a bonus that he had put on there. So I definitely wanted to enter this. I have five things, just a fair warning, Rob. <laughs> Uh, you're not just getting four like you wanted. You're getting five uh, just because I threw something in special for you. Uh, but it is sh to show four autographed items. Um, so going along with the theme of Off the Wall Tiny Tim, I actually have this. I've never showed this in a video, I don't think. I picked this up a couple years ago because I found it online for about 20 bucks, And I was like, you know, it's just he's one of those iconic people. Everybody knows who Tiny Tim is. Everybody's freaked out by the song Tiptoe Through the Tulips. Uh, but it's his album, God Bless Tiny Tim, and it is signed on the front in crayon. It's definitely a Tiny Tim thing to do, and then in Sharpie on the back that you can see better. But, you know, I'm not a huge, gigantic fan of his, but to have something signed by him is pretty cool in my opinion. 
And then moving along, let me get this back in here real quick. Next up, Ronnie Montrose, one of my favorite guitar players of all time. And Gamma is one of my favorite bands of all time. I uh, have this promo copy of the first Gamma album signed by Ronnie, so that's pretty cool. That's an autograph you don't see all the time. Um, my second favorite guitar player is Rory Gallagher. I uh, picked this up a couple years ago, couldn't believe it. Got it for a steal. Uh, nobody else bid on it. The guy that listed for like 60 bucks. It came out of Australia. You know, my first time really buying something overseas from over there. I'd bought from Germany before and everything. But it got here in one piece. And it is a copy of Roy Gallagher Deuce. Signed on the back by Jerry McAvoy, the bass player. Ted McKenna, who unfortunately just passed away recently. From Michael Shanker and all sorts of people. And signed by Rory, unfortunately in pen, but it still looks nice in person. Let me take it out of here so you can see it. It's a glossy cover, so it might not show up great, but just to have something signed by him is unreal. Uh, the only other guitar player that I really need something signed by is Gary Moore, but his stuff, you know, when you find it, it goes for a lot of money because people know who he is. Rory is more of an underrated person. Um, then for Rob, threw this one in here, had to do it, had to make you jealous. I know, I suck. Uh, copy of... Breaking the Chains, the original German Carrera Press uh, with the Don Dokken name. What's cool about this is it's signed on the back by most of the original band. George didn't sign it, um, but it is signed by Don. Very early Don signature, Mick Brown, and Juan Cruchier because, of course, um, that was before Jeff Pilsen was in the band. So this had to have been signed, you know, 81 82 at mo at latest, you know, that's by the time Jeff had joined the band, I believe. Uh, and this came straight from Germany. I did order it from Germany. So this was probably signed, I want to say, you know, at the Beat Club show, because there is a video online. I'll leave a link to that down below. I know that's off track, but uh, the Beat Club show, they did. I would about 50% say this was probably signed there. But they did play in Germany back in the day, so, you know, I can't 100% sure say that, but that'd be pretty cool if this was signed there. Then the bonus thing, uh, this is something I haven't shown on video. I'm waiting to do a Doc and Collection video. Got a couple things that I'm waiting to get in, and then I'm do a just a big Doc and Collection. Uh, but this thing stays in a special box, sealed away, never sees the light of day, because I'm just scared to damage it. Um... And I'm not going to say much. I'm just going to put this here. And Rob, you can freak out, fanboy, whatever you want. Uh, but this is the prize of my collection. It's an original copy of Doc and Hard Rock Woman. Before Doc and was a band. And it is signed by Don, uh, Gary Pekka, and Juan Cruchier. So that's something you don't see all, every day. Uh, so that... Never thought I would own a copy of this, and that popped up, and it was signed nonetheless. Um, it's the most expensive album I've bought. Well, it's a single, but I paid almost $200 for this, but I do not regret it one bit. It's totally worth it, and I just had to throw that in there for you. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching. Go check out Rob's channel. Check out the other guys that I've talked about, and I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace out.